have I got it? Read. This is on the just do it list, right? Just get it done. Get it out of the way. It's much requested. Importing constraints from Inventor into Showcase. Right. If you've been over to the Showcase help page, which details what you've got to do here, it's pretty obvious that uh, it's like a cryptic riddle. They've left out critical key bits of information that you need to know about to get this done, and it's just not there. So it leaves it for you to figure out, which is, defies the point of a help page. So thought, right, well, let's just, let's just do this, and this should be relevant for years, because by the looks of it, I think, don't quote me on this, but Autodesk have just given up completely with Showcase by the looks of it. There's no downloads, updates, service packs, hotfixes for 2016. Nothing's changed in a long time, so I can't see anything changing in years either. Also be aware that this process is as buggy as balls. I've already started this video multiple times and it's crashed out, bugged out. And I'm, I'm, if it does it again, if it crashes or bugs out again in this go, in this attempt, I'm just going to lose my shit on camera and carry on. I mean, I'm, just, I'm doing it. I don't care. I'm going to expose myself as the rage nerd that I am. And we'll just see that happening. You can watch me melt down in public. Right, let's get cracking. So what I've got here is an inventor model on screen, which is a pedal from a race car. It moves backwards and forwards. So I need to simulate the motion or movement of the pedal like this in Showcase. And that starts from Inventor. Because doing it in Showcase, you can do that in Showcase, but it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare at best because of the, the way the transforms work and you have to pick up multiple parts. And it's just a lot easier if you can just do it in Inventor and then have that recognized in Showcase. So there's a couple of steps missing that it took me a while to figure out. And that's obviously what I'm going to do highlight in this video so we need to create the constraint first inventor so we need that obviously that's the resting position ish of the pedal and it's going to move to about this position so we need to simulate that with a constraint and inventor so we're going to go to create a constraint you can have I've, i haven't tested them all but i suspect most constraints would work and most common ones i guess would be a mate constraint and an angular constraint they're the ones that you're mainly going to be driving over through in a showcase so we're going to have an angular constraint and that's going to be a directed solution two faces between here and say here of zero degrees, right? That's the resting position of the pedal as it's constrained. So that's now fully constrained. Right, next thing you've got to do, and you've probably done this one, is rename the constraint to something that you recognize. So I'm gonna call this pedal. Click save, you think, and the help page suggests that that's enough, but it's not. There's a there's one more step that you need to do, one more critical step, which if you don't do this, it doesn't work. What you've then got to do is right click on your constraint and then drive it. You've got to drive it from the resting position to the extent that you want the animation to go to. So the pedal is going to go to about here, which is about negative 30 degrees. Then that's still not enough. You've got to click this button here, right? Reverse. So you're reversing the pedal back to the extent that the constraint is going to go to. So it's between here and here. When you, you've, Then you've got to leave it in this position. You've got to leave it in the extent position. Click OK. And then Inventor sort of creates this saved cached state. And then you can see the pedal there is minus 30. That's its current position. It's normal resting position is zero degrees but we're leaving it in the negative 30 position so you save your model at this point go to showcase file import import files browse to the assembly that you were just working on in inventor you can still have it open in inventor that's not a problem click settings you can ignore most of the crap in here representations and shots and conversion settings none of that matters what matters is this bit here animation create behaviors from constraints Type in the name of the constraint that you want to import. You don't have to click plus. That just allows you to import more than one constraint, but we're just all we're interested in is the first one, which is called pedal. It's what I renamed the original constraint in Inventor 2. And then click close and then import. Continue. Right, you need to browse to the project file that you're working on in Inventor. But that'll import the model from Inventor into Showcase and providing that you've driven the constraint and left it in its final position it should pick it up right now by default you kind of can't see anything it's like well has it worked i can it's not letting me do anything hit b on the keyboard and that brings up the behaviors and then you'll see your constraint providing that you've done everything that i've said to do you'll find your constraint in the behaviors area with the name of your constraint underneath it right click on that and then go to fbx animation controls 
then you can click play and reverse and it will show your constraint reversing to and from or playing to and from the position that you've driven it to in Inventor. So that would be zero degrees and then that is the negative 30 position that we left Inventor in when we click save. And that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you import a constraint from Inventor into Showcase. If that's all you need to do, then that's all you need to do. That's as much as I need to show you. Thanks very much. Toodles. However, you might be thinking, well, what next? What what do you do next? <sighs> Fine. I've, I can import the constraint, but what am I going to do in Showcase? Am I just going to click, just going to sit here looking at a boring model, click and play in reverse? Is that what we can do with it here? No, you can do more with it. So this is sort of going off the beaten track a little bit. And I'm just going to touch on a couple of extra showcase bits here. Just touching on them, not going into too much detail, or this will just this video will be too long. So what do you do with the behavior, right? Well, the, the main thing that you would do with the behavior is you'd add it to a storyboard slide. So you'd right-click on it, add to new storyboard slide, and play it forward from the start. What that's going to do is create a new storyboard slide. So go to story, storyboard, it creates slide one. Right, that's a new storyboard slide, and it adds the pedal animation to that slide as the first action. So in this slide, it's going to start by playing the pedal animation going from 0 to minus 30. So if we right-click on the slide, play it from the start, the pedal goes from 0 to minus 30. Great. What next? Well, normally, you'd want it to then go back to its original position, so you can then Go to the properties of the storyboard slide, so right click on that, go to properties, and then you get this animation timeline. Zero, it's a three second duration, so you've got zero, one second there, two seconds, and three seconds. So for the first 0.6-ish seconds, it's playing the animation of the constraint from start to negative 30. But then you want it to go back to zero. So what you do is you go to slide items, choose the behavior of the pedal, play backwards from the end and then just drag this little clip right so this is the animation of it going from minus 30 to zero drag that to start from the end of the first animation click rewind and then click play and you can see it goes start back to the end that's it what next well at this point you can add extra you can have it going backwards again and then backwards again you can add as many of these in as you want over the course of three seconds you can increase the timeline of the slide if you want more than three seconds or you can add like a camera shot if you want to. So you can have the camera orbiting the pedal as it's moving backwards and forwards. You can do that if you want. So you've got a story, create a shot, a cinematic orbit, right? And then we can say, right, well, this is going to be a camera 360 orbit. That's just the name of it, so you know what it is. For the transition, cut to the shot. Uh, we're going to have a cinematic orbit over the duration of three seconds, because that's how long our slide is. So it's going to be the, the entire slide. And then click close. And then when you right click on the slide and click play from the start, it doesn't do it because I haven't added it to the bloody slide yet. Right? So right click on your shot. So this is the camera shot, that's it doing its thing. Right click on that and then add to the current storyboard slide. Right click on your slide now and play from the start and then it does that. Pretty straightforward. What next? Well, I suppose you'd need to make it look good by adding it to, a, I don't know, put a background on it, do your shadows and stuff. You'd mess about with your lights and whatnot and then you'd go file publish a movie and you're going to create a movie of slide one which is the slide we were just working on mp4 blah 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 blah, blah. and then you click publish the movie and then you'd get a movie of the pedal going you know orbit the camera orbit around the pedal and the pedal moving backwards and forwards right so there, there you go that's a basic overview of bringing a constraint in and then what you do with that constraint once you've brought it into showcase on a very basic level obviously obviously okay that's it that's the thing that's probably about enough that's the process and what you need to do hopefully that was useful if it was please press like on the video give it a thumbs up or if you thought this was utterly rubbish press dislike if you don't like working stuff and being told how to do something by all means press dislike subscribe to the channel and i'll act and i'll see you later in the next one Ooh.